Hello, I am Zhao Chuan. Today, let's get to know Haley the Helicoprian. Helicoprian, a famous relative of sharks, is a group of cartilaginous fish that lived in the Permian period. It was not a shark. The real large-sized sharks did not show their existence until the Cretaceous period. Before the Cretaceous, there were some relatively small species of sharks, but they were all inconspicuous and had not evolved into ferocious animals, like the great white sharks in our mind today. But some of the sharks, closest relatives, such as Helicoprion, had developed with a pretty large body size. The relatively large Helicoprion could exceed 10 meters in length and was a giant predator. Helicoprion had evolved into this shark appearance before sharks did, and even more advanced. That is to say, Helicoprion was an animal that had adapted for high-speed swimming. Compared with sharks, its body shape was more simplified. Its body was quite shark-like but had no pelvic fins, anal fins, or a second dorsal fin. Its tail was also more like that of bony fish than most sharks. The bony fishes that can swim at high speed generally possess a caudal fin, with symmetrical upper and lower lobes. We know many sharks have a longer upper lobe and a shorter lower lobe, but this was not the case for Helicoprion. Its body shape has also been deduced from some of its close relatives in recent years. No remains of the Helicoprion's body have been collected, so we reconstructed its body structure according to its close relatives. The dorsal fin and pectoral fins of Helicoprion were a bit like an isosceles triangle, neither as slender nor curved backward as that of modern sharks. Although its fins also had a structure like a tailplane, or a configuration of the horizontal stabilizer, the overall shape was closer to a triangle, including the dorsal fin. Its fins generally had rounded tips with radial rays inside, which might not be visible after being covered with flesh. The upper or lower lobes of its called the fin were symmetrical, resembling sharks, the side muscles of its tail and the cartilage extended into the upper lobe. The overall shape was more suitable for high-speed swimming. Helicoprion was undoubtedly a high-speed swimmer, which was also reflected by its diet. Then, let's move to look at the head of Helicoprion. What exactly the head of Helicoprion looked like has always been a mystery. When people did not find the complete fossils in the early days, they thought it appeared like a great white shark. Therefore, the earliest restorations generally illustrated the helicoprion with a head similar to that of Lammiformes, the mackerel sharks, such as the great white shark. Later, we learned that helicoprion was actually closer to the Chimeriformes than sharks. Therefore, for a period of time, its head was often restored to look like a chimera, with two huge eyes located forward. There were complex armors on the head, which were spliced into various shapes. Many grooves existed between the armors, accommodating numerous ampullae of Lorenzini. In that period, people restored the head of Helicoprion to be very short. We now know that the head of Helicoprion probably looked like this, thanks to a well-preserved fossil of its head cartilage, which clearly shows the position of the eyes. Although the fossil was pressed very flattened, it still tells us where one of its eyes was located, how long the nose was, and where the nostrils were roughly situated. Most importantly, that specimen preserved the position of the tooth whirl in its lower jaw. One of the most notable features of Helicoprion is that its teeth were arranged in whirls like a snail shell. When people first discovered Helicoprion in the early years, this structure confused people, and a series of associations were made. Among the relatively famous views, one thought this structure was not teeth, but a kind of scales. We know that the scales of the shark's body are the same structure as its teeth, and the shape is also similar. There are some ancient cartilaginous fishes, such as the Stethocanthus, possessing scales similar to the shape and size of teeth, on the top of its head, and the dorsal fin, which formed an illusion of being full of teeth here. For a while, people thought that the so-called teeth of Helicoprion were scales on its body, and restored them onto its fins, especially the dorsal fin. At the earliest time, people placed the tooth whirl on the dorsal fin, but made its face still like a chimera. Later, people realized that this whirl was indeed the teeth, but there have been many hypotheses about where this tooth whirl was located. 
Some thought it rolled down like this on the upper jaw, while others thought it spiraled down like this on the anterior of the lower jaw. At the same time, they believed that this well would move when Helicoprion was alive, and it could use this tooth well to whip enemies or prey. But this statement was quickly self-defeating because the bones on both sides of the roots of its teeth were obviously very hard, not movable, without any joints, and without any muscle attachments. But it still made people think that this tooth well might grow here. Some other people believed that Helicoprion might have a very elongated lower jaw. This circular saw-like structure was located at the anterior of the mouth, resembling animals such as sleeper sharks in Australia today, which have a forward protrusion at the front of the mouth, a structure accommodating will-like teeth inside. This statement might take reference to such a phenomenon to some extent, but then, some complete cartilaginous remains of the helicoprion head show that its teeth actually grow in this position. The open mouth is like this, and most teeth are encased in the lower jaw, very close to the mouth root. This tooth well rotates like this from the inside. About the whip-like structure mentioned in the earliest hypothesis, the direction was correct. It did grow here, as speculated, but was more posterior, and the tooth well was embedded in the lower jaw. Its growth mechanism is like this. A newborn helicoprion had this tooth grow in the mouth like typical sharks. Then this tooth grew from the inside of the mouth to the outside. The more teeth it grew, the further the teeth were pushed forward, then downward. In the process of growing downward, the teeth would be wrapped by the skin on both sides, and the teeth would continue to rotate inside its lower jaw. As it grew older, there would be more teeth, the well would become larger and larger, and the jaw might also enlarge accordingly. And only until this time we realized that the teeth of Helicoprion were arranged only in a single row. Unlike humans or other animals with teeth on the left and right sides, it only had a row of teeth in the middle, similar to an electrical chainsaw lathe, with no teeth in the upper jaw. It was likely that the upper jaw had to rasp like structures that work together with teeth in the lower jaw correspondingly, but there is no evidence for this so far. After continuous testing by scientists, this structure was found to be very suitable for feeding mollusks such as belemnites or shelled ammonites. It could bite the ammonites. Hedden used the circular saw structure to tear the flesh out of its shell. The fossils unearthed with the helicoprion also show this. People have found traces of many mollusks being cut in half, so this hypothesis seems to be the most accurate currently. Therefore, this helicoprion is the closest to its real appearance we know so far. Regarding other features, we do not have much evidence. For example, how many gills did it possess? Some scientists believe it had five to seven gills, maybe five or six, or even seven, as helicoprion was a large animal. In addition, we don't know its skin color at all, but considering it was a fast swimmer, we designed its body color to look more like a dolphin. But after all, it was a close relative of sharks. The scales of sharks often reflect metallic luster under the sun, and even have a color changing iridescent. Therefore, we made its body seem to have a changeable iridescent effect. Good, the above concludes our introduction to Haley the Helicoprion. Thank you all.